<laughs> Welcome back, YouTube, to It's Chow Time Pod. It's your host, Red. I got a video today that's quite different from all my other videos. This chow is Asian chow, so it's actually completely all Asian stuff. So <laughs> just how uh, Asian men were portrayed and been portrayed for like the last century in media and... Um, how things are changing for us so I, I just thought it was funny uh some of these things don't actually affect me but i'll discuss it while we're watching the video so please like and subscribe down below i'd really appreciate that and let's get to the chow it's chow time guys yeah it's a pbs show <laughs> hunky asian male characters because i'm here now and i'm all the boy there some of whom are not the brightest bulbs. I know. You already knew that. Presenting the rise of the Asian himbo. Yeah, I, I have no clue about this word First, until I saw this. The himbo this. is hot. Second, the himbo is very, very kind. And third, the himbo is not really academically inclined. Which is quite different from these representations of Asian men in film and TV. Yeah. So, when did we go from this to this? Let's get a historian's take on the rise of the Asian himbo in film and TV and what it tells us. Again, most of my audience isn't Asian, so I just think it's funny. At least we get to see the inside of how Asian men are kind of portrayed and things like that. Again, I just think it's funny. Nothing too much too serious about this. About how Hollywood is changing. To discuss this topic, we're going to need some props, some historians, and a special guest. Uh. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So what is the Asian himbo? In the last five to seven yeah, years, explain. Asian male representation on screen has gone from romantically and sexually undesirable to very desirable. Okay, so what guess. goes on this other axis? Previous representations of Asian men on screen portray them as academically competent, so nerdy, undesirable and nerdy. We're also seeing their move. Yeah. Dude, I love Revenge of the Nerds and the Asian guy that was in there. To being desirable and yet academically incompetent. So between desirable and academically incompetent, we might call this top left area the himbo quadrant. So attractive non-smart Asians are the most uh, sought after is what he's saying. <laughs> okay, so I get where you're going with this and I can kind of visualize what we're talking about, but it'd be really helpful for me if we had a few examples from TV yeah, and film. Please. Lucky for us, we actually have a few examples right here. Do you know who this is? Yes, yeah. I do know that character infamously from Breakfast at Tiffany's. So this is Mr. Yunioshi. You cannot go on or keep ringing my bell! Even though Yunioshi was played by a white actor, I think mm -hmm. we should include him as one of these early examples of the- I can agree with that because he was actually the first portrayal of Asian men in film. Representation of Asian men in Hollywood. He was portrayed as undesirable because he was a nagged Holly Golightly's character. Mm -hmm. But he also wasn't particularly competent. He was bumbling yeah. and always yelling. He would definitely be in this bottom left Yunioshi quadrant. So where did this stereotype come from? Historically speaking, the way that Asian men have been portrayed on screen really goes back to the mid 19th century. This was the era of building the transcontinental railroad out west, where more than 15,000 men from China came to the US and laid over 90% of that railroad track. This was also the same era that gave rise. I did not know we, that Asians or Chinese laid 90% of those tracks. That's actually a lot. ...to Yellow Peril, a racist depiction of people from East and Southeast Asia as threats to the Western world. While employers really coveted them for their cheapness. The broader racism all over American society really saw Chinese men as a threat, as a threat for competition for jobs, for settlement and housing, and specifically as- It's funny how our country is like the melting pot country, but almost every set of immigrants that came to this country has felt some kind of uh, backlash in a sense. Even uh, 
white countries like uh like ireland and scottish and stuff like that when they first came here they were seen as inferior to the white americans you know and then came other white races that took place and then uh, i don't think very asians don't qualify in the the grand scheme of things too much for that as a threat for white women White nativists use these racial stereotypes as fuel to- Yeah, very similar to how uh, white women weren't allowed to associate with black men and things like that, so. Advocate for the passing of two kinds of exclusion acts. First, immigration exclusion, which led to the Chinese Exclusion Act. But secondly, exclusion from romantic and sexual and social life. So they passed these things called anti-miscegenation laws in which white women were banned from marrying outside the race. The various laws and racial stereotypes that affected Asian men in the public sphere also affected the way that they were represented in Hollywood. A really famous example is the character Fu Manchu. I've never seen this movie. I hear this about it. This villain Fu Manchu was represented as not just undesirable, invasive, and threatening. It's weird that it shows us uh, shows Asian men with such long nails too. But really monstrous. And so these various racial oh, stereotypes guess, yeah. would the monstrous look would be the long nails so. have incredible and really insidious hold over Asian masculinity. Another infamous early stereotype. I know you guys probably recognize Long Dick Thong from 16 Candles. Never seen this movie either. Very clever dinner. Appetizing food fitting neatly into interesting uh, round pie. He's definitely high on the competency scale. He's a nerd. He's given this really terrible nickname, the Donger. He doesn't have a lot of time for character development at all in the film. And so he is portrayed. It's funny that he's called the Donger because uh, my last name is Vong. And uh, I know people that used to call us Vongers. <laughs> so I actually did not know until right now that they were making fun of us <laughs> until right now. <laughs> That's very undesirable. Even in the 1980s, we get these older racial stereotypes, not necessarily about a monstrous Asian man, but definitely one that is the butt of all jokes. When Long Duck Dong is first introduced, he's just introduced as being weird and foreign. What's happening, hot stuff? A lot of Asian guys got called the Donger, or Long <laughs> Duck Dong. You know, just because there wasn't anything else to call us. There's an episode of Fresh Off the Boat where Jessica, the mom, is is berating Lewis for going on TV and kind of making a little bit of a fool of himself. You know what it reminded me of? Your favorite character. No. From 16 Candles. Don't say it. Long Duck Dong. Until something else comes along and you have a different <laughs> interpretation of what it means to be an Asian male, that's the one that kind of sticks in people's heads. You know what? I actually did not realize how much media had a hold on just the image of how Asian men looked. To tell the truth. Uh, it just really didn't affect me. I did watch movies, but as I was growing up, Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee were like the main Asian figures, I guess. Or those are probably the two names everybody can name if you said, oh, you know, can you name an Asian actor? So, I mean, at that time we weren't viewed as so ridiculous i guess but i also have met women that you know i was like oh you're not nerdy or oh you speak well i hear that a lot this next one's gonna be fun because it's a double whammy kumar yeah. portrayed by call penn and Her shout outs to newcastle fucking one of my favorite movies love these guys Harold by john cho Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Classic. Okay, so this is tricky. Harold's character is portrayed as pretty competent. He yeah. has a professional job, he makes good money, he is seen as hardworking, but he's also a huge stoner, which is kind of over on the incompetent side. We're so high right now. Kumar is kind of the same. They ain't wrong. When you're a stoner, they automatically assume that you're not the brightest, you're not motivated, and you're just not a good worker. So, I mean, I get that stereotype a lot once I tell people that I do smoke. But 
without telling them, they would never figure it out. And middling in terms of desirable and undesirable. I see this movie as a sort of turning point for the representation of Asian masculinity in Hollywood. You know, it breaks stereotypes in a lot of ways because Asian Americans are often seen as kind of- You know what? I guess so, because even with the Jackie Chan movies, he was seen as a bumbling, like he was badass, but he was just still bumbling and he definitely wasn't the romantic um, protagonist in, in a lot of his movies. Actually, like all of his movies, he's never really been the romantic antagonist or protagonist, I'm sorry. so Kind of squares and geeks and nerds. It's yeah, in a sense... Harold was in this one because he got with the Hispanic woman right at, at the end of the movie. So, oh yeah, I guess this would be the first one. I actually didn't think about it. Strange that we would ask so much of, say, Hollywood to depict Asian men as being desirable or just capable of love and loving and being loved. But that's something that we've had to grapple with. And so a film like something like Harold and Kumar where guys... Again, this, this doesn't actually affect me personally, but I can see how this affects majority a lot of Asians, a lot of Asian men, especially the, the men that aren't built like me, that don't go to the gym, that are just very skinny. I can see where all the, the negative stereotypes fall on them. These are seen as just normal dudes out for a night. That also can go a long way towards uh, making Asian men desirable. <laughs> so if Harold and Kumar were pivotal characters in changing Asian male representation, when do we start seeing more of the himbo? Living in Chinese food all day can be depressing. Like when people yell out, food's here, as if they have a family. Dong from Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. I think he's... Here. No, we no, have no, a himbo. We have I don't a watch himbo. enough TV to he's know these people, really. He's definitely high on the desirability scale and how he's portrayed, but he's not portrayed as very bright. He's sweet, so he has the himbo trifecta, and he's right up here as a romantic lead. Sweet, incompetent, and nice. Is the himbo? Sounds like a simp. <laughs> right around the same place is Josh Chan. From Crazy, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Girlfriend. He is incredibly desirable. You didn't like touch some dirty glasses and then try to pop a pimple on your face, did you? <laughs> no. And kind of academically incompetent, but very sweet. Yeah. Next one, from The Good Place. Jason Mendoza. Jason Mendoza. Boom. Another himbo, Reggie from Riverdale. He's so Asian? why has this form of representation of Asian men a himbo that's handsome yet kind of ditzy becomes so popular. I think Hollywood has pivoted from the stereotypical, <laughs> undesirable <Kim> Asian <laughs> male figure to the Asian honk, the Asian thirst trap. Because they started to find that Asian representation and diverse representation on screen was incredibly profitable. Yeah, there's a lot of fucking Asians. So you put Asians on movies, but most likely want to go watch it sometime, you know, here and there. I mean, I went to go watch Rich Asians, or Crazy Rich Asians. Hollywood, over the last five to seven years, has had its start at a racial reckoning. Producers and production companies are being called out for not having diverse writers, not having diverse cast. There's 17 million Asian Americans in this country, and there's 17 million Italian Americans. They have The Godfather, Goodfellas, <laughs> Rocky, The Sopranos. Uh, I feel like that's a little bit just like uh, complaining a little bit, but that's just me. I'm not, I'm not an actor or an actor or anything. That I'm not in the industry, so I don't know how they feel in the industry. Just me personally, I don't really care about Asian representation in movies. We got I mean, okay, I say that, but if there's Asians in a movie, I'll definitely go watch it. I'm not saying that they have to be in a movie, but when there are Asians in the movie, I am more inclined to want to go watch it, I guess. <laughs> got long duck dog, so we got a long way to go. Movements for diversity like Oscar So White or uh, starring John Cho. Yeah, One thing that funny. I really was hoping with starring John Cho was to show that it's not just Asian roles that Asian Americans play. We can play the lead actor or the romantic lead in a role that is not race specific. 
those all have kind of an additive effect to the conversation about diversity and inclusion in Hollywood. These older tropes like the hunk, right, the, the, the himbo romantic co-lead, now being opened up for diverse casts and specifically Asian American men. Hey! Hi! Well, that just shows like, well, change is possible. You know, for better or for worse, we can change the way our stories are told and the way that we are characterized. I think that representation is definitely changing. It's definitely altering. Thanks a lot for showing me your theory and for letting me do some history, arts, and crafts. We don't get to do that too often, right? Yeah, and thanks a lot for helping me out. This was really great. Thanks for watching. How was that, Chow? I'm sure that didn't really interest many of you guys, just because, I don't. again, I don't think many of my audience is actually Asian, but... It's nice to like kind of see how Asian men progressed in society nowadays. I guess we are looked at a little bit more desirable. I don't. I, I still believe we are still uh, the least desired males in dating apps, which is perfectly fine. There's much other assets that we can do. You know, like men, especially Asian guys, get to the fucking gym. No one wants a skinny man no one they'd rather have a fat built guy than a skinny scrawny guy why because they don't want to feel bigger than you that's <laughs> just think about it that way but i actually have another video probably tomorrow about an asian woman talking shit about asian men so just just wanted to put some things out there for the asian content so please like and subscribe down below i'd really appreciate that and uh i'll catch you guys next time it's chow time